Education is what's important. Training, preparation for the expected. Education, preparation for the unexpected. Good afternoon, Team Krulak community. My name is Major Ian Brown. I'm the operations officer at the Krulak Center. And on behalf of Marine Corps University, the Marine Corps University Foundation, and the Brute Krulak Center for Innovation and Creativity, welcome back to the Brutecast, our series designed to connect the worlds of the warfighter and PME with the best and innovative and creative thought. Before we begin, please remember that all opinions expressed here are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Krulak Center, Marine Corps University, the United States Marine Corps, or any other agency of the U.S. government. We will also be recording this webcast for the benefit of our community of interest who can't join us today. So we ask that you be mindful of keeping your microphones muted to avoid disrupting the presentation, as well as keeping your webcams off to help us preserve our bandwidth to have a smooth stream. So we had to do a little flexibility for this one, um, but we're pleased to have feature today one of our own members here from the Krulak Center, and that's Major Jared Cooper, who is our operations and outreach officer. Major Cooper is an artillery officer by trade with experience in deployments in both special operations and conventional Marine Corps units across a number of combatant commands. He completed resident expeditionary warfare school here and on graduating was assigned to the Krulak Center where he has served as the operations and outreach officer for the past year. He is currently pursuing uh, an, an MA in security studies at the Walsh School of Foreign Service at Georgetown University and it relishes the opportunity to facilitate novel ideas and new modes of learning for all students at MCU and across the fleet. So in today's broadcast, we're excited that Major Cooper is gonna be discussing a unique product offered by us at the Krulak Center, which is our elective class entitled, Where Good Ideas Come From. This is a non-traditional elective that the Krulak Center has provided to Marine Corps University's Command and Staff College for the last two years, garnering universally positive feedback from those students who took it. Where Good Ideas Come From is also a program that's adaptable as a tool for unit PME and professional development. So we're very excited to be able to discuss this program, both with our MCU audience, as well as our wider community of interest. Before we start, I'll ask one last time to make sure that all of you in the audience have microphones and cameras off if you haven't already done so. We will have a question and answer session at the end of Major Cooper's presentation. So if you do have a question as he's going along, just type it into the group chat function and I will get to them chronologically and to as many as I can after Major Cooper concludes. So with that, Major Cooper, over to you. Good afternoon. Like Ian said, thanks for joining us today. So first off, I'd like to say this is not necessarily your typical class or lecture. This is more of an overview and brief discussion of a unique Krulak Center elective, which was taught at the Command and Staff College at Marine Corps University. So I'll go over the basic fundamentals of the class, how it originated, and why this differs from your typical class or PME construct. Everything stems from Stephen Johnson's book, Where Good Ideas Come From. So if you haven't read it, I highly encourage you to do so. This course is based on the book and was developed as a way to challenge and offer an alternative method of learning within the established curriculum. Like at the Krulak Center, we promote novel ideas and collaborative critical thinking. The Commandant and Secretary of the Navy were clear when they stated, it's our cognitive edge that will win the next conflict. We figured this class to be germane to their intent. This was a way to stoke the passions and genuine interests of the students, providing them an opportunity to pursue topics and information relevant to them. Based on their own desires and life experiences and exploring a way to tie together all of their ideas, knowledge and expertise to find commonalities as well as integrate new perspectives that would benefit them beyond their time at MCU. So what makes a good idea? It's a network of linked information. Our brains function in a similar pattern to our external world. We create new neural networks when we create new ideas. Just like we develop relationships and cultivate our personal and professional networks, they serve to broaden our experiences and diversify our perspectives. It's a messy and collaborative enterprise. Messy in the fact that, as an example, we use Alexander Fleming when he discovered penicillin due to mold accidentally infiltrating a culture. So sometimes this organization is a sort of ecosystem for great ideas to present themselves or to be discovered. This mess increases the chance for serendipitous encounters between divergent or normally separated information. Ideas are collaborative by their nature. They don't emerge in isolation or after long periods of introspection. 
They're based on exchanging ideas with others. So the role of error and repetitive failure. Errors or anomalies can excite us or encourage us to indulge our curiosity and find out why things have failed. Good ideas have to be correct on a basic level, but environments where errors, noise, mess, and uh, messes are allowed, it encourages an environment where good ideas emerge. It's the willingness to explore new things and become passionately curious, and even challenging the way we view error. So for instance, in science, a failed experiment is still considered a success. In business, there are even failure parties. So it's the willingness to break out from the norm and challenge new ideas. As far as hunches and uh, flashes of brilliance, like the light bulb went off or a eureka type moment, those are typically the antithesis of how good ideas developed. Darwin's a great example of this. So to quote from Stephen Johnson's TED Talk, he states, Darwin himself in his autobi autobiography tells a story of coming up with the idea for natural selection as a classic eureka moment. He's in his study, it's October of 1838, and he's reading Malthus, actually on population. And all of a sudden, the basic algorithm of natural selection kind of pops into his head and he says, ah, at last, I have a theory with which to work. That's in his autobiography. But about a decade or two ago, a wonderful scholar named Howard Gruber went back and looked at Darwin's notebooks from this period. Darwin kept these copious notebooks, which he wrote down every little idea that he had, every little hunch. And what Gruber found was that Darwin had the full theory of natural selection for months and months and months before he actually had his alleged epiphany. There are passages where you can read it and you think you're reading from a Darwin textbook from the period before he had this epiphany. And so what you realize is that Darwin, in a sense, had the idea, he had the concept, but was unable to fully think of it yet. And that is actually how great ideas often happen. They fade into view over long periods of time. So spending time outside, freeing our minds from the hustle and bustle of everyday life allows thoughts to germinate and expand. Changing the scenery and affording oneself some quiet time allows one to ruminate on the day or the current issues and concerns that you're faced with. Just by breaking our normal patterns allows us to see things through a different lens and challenge our current assumptions. All right, so what we see here is a basic wine press. This would later serve as an inspiration to the printing press. In Germany, around 1440, goldsmith Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press, which started the printing revolution. This invention owed much to the medieval paper press, in turn modeled after the ancient wine and olive press of the Mediterranean area. And for the next one, probably my favorite example, is what can a car mechanic have to do with premature babies and neonatal incubators? Well, infant mortality rates in the developing world could be significantly reduced by having neonatal incubators. However, sophisticated pieces of equipment are prone to failure, and without the requisite parts and expertise, they can stay broken for a significant period of time. So a gentleman named Timothy Prostero had an organization called Design That Matters. His team of industrial designers, doctors, and rural healthcare experts conceived a device that could significantly lower infant mortality rates in developing nations by focusing on ubiquitous discarded automobile parts that could be repurposed to govern incubator systems like heat and airflow. Thus, the Neo-Nature Neo -Nurture device was born, an incubator made entirely of car parts, a relatively abundant resource in the developing world. So taking an idea from one area and applying it to a different context can sometimes result in a pretty uh, innovative approach and, and something phenomenal. So quoting Stephen Johnson, Ideas more often than not are cobbled together from whatever parts that happen to be around nearby. We take ideas from other people, people we've learned from, people we run into in the coffee shop, and we stitch them together into new forms and we create something new. That's really where innovation happens. So going here back into the actual class itself, looking at this, you have a, the typical construct is you have a class leader who's senior in rank to that of the students. The location is always the same classroom. The syllabus is created by the instructor. And the topics are all, you know, of a military nature. Everyone reads the same material, in you know, typical 60 to 80 pages of class, and everybody discusses the, the same material with a few deviations um, from the, the initial kind of topic. So what we did here is we made the, uh, the instructor more of a facilitator. They're the same rank as the students. 
We diversified the locations and changed it throughout the year. The students created their own syllabus. They focused on topics, so broad general categories, not specifically military related, and they all read something different. The only requirement was that it had to be at least 200 pages pertaining to each topic, which could be augmented with YouTube videos, podcasts, etc. So this course is a reading intensive elective where students provided the opportunity to create their own syllabus, as mentioned, and, and focus on different topics. So the topics that we had this year were innovation, leadership, ethics, philosophy, contemporary issues, science, art, the mind, fiction, poetry, history, ancient or the classical period, and the future, which is the culminating event. And the future was more so how things look in 10, say 50 years down the road. What do we need to know as professional warfighters and what insights can we draw from external sources and information that deviates from the military norm? So each student chose different materials relating to the given topic and each student presented a 10 to 15 minute overview, hosted a guided discussion and or practical application of the material to showcase and expose the class to what they learned. They were challenged to creatively convey their knowledge, which had three tangible benefits, Ma maximum exposure to new ideas, being both the student and the teacher and offered opportunities to synchronize and synergize novel connections of ideas. So as the instructor, the biggest thing to do is be creative. You have to be prepared. You got to try something new and you have to allow the students to explore. And you want to try to connect all the ideas going on in that current class as well as tie them into ideas from the, the previous class and iterations. As a student, they have to be creative, they have to be curious, they have to be engaged, and um, they have to have a bias for action. They need to write things down from each class, reflect on it, and, um, and see where they can draw parallels between the different ideas and look at the way that it made them feel, the way that it made them think, the reactions to it, and really delve deeper and ruminate on the certain topics. All right, so commonplace notebook. Students were required to keep a commonplace notebook to reflect and reinforce ideas and assimilate information. This is supposed to be a repository of information, a place for the students to capture the salient points from each class, discuss and ruminate on the things they read, heard, and their general thoughts, reactions, and feelings that occurred to them. Having a notebook significantly increases recall and retention of information and ideas. So it is not your daily journal or diary or your schedule. It is something solely to learning and increasing uh, idea generation. All right, so I'm gonna go into a couple student critiques. They're fairly long, but I really feel that they capture the essence of the class. So the first one from Major AJ Silo. He said, prior to this class, I considered reading a valuable use of time as a way to enhance critical thinking through increased awareness, pattern recognition, and increased knowledge. Now, having completed the class, I realized additional positive impacts gained from the use of andragogy and the process of reading, sharing ideas, and collaborating with others with different viewpoints. This class allowed me to experience a number of agreements and arguments with equally passionate professionals on a spectrum of topics not covered within the command and staff curriculum. Consequently, I question assumptions differently, more frequently, and from different and previously unexplored perspectives. Likewise, I benefit from good habits learned in the class to include mind mapping, memorization techniques, and connection of ideas. Since reading a book from each of the 10 topics in the class, I've recognized several underlying themes to include the Marine Corps planning process, meditation, technology, psychopathy, morality, and free will. Completing this elective has been the most rewarding and enjoyable experience thus far at Command and Staff. It offered me the opportunity to study a variety of topics in depth with a small group of like-minded students equally interested in gaining a more holistic view of the world through the sharing of ideas. This class directly achieved the mission of command and staff to develop critical thinkers, innovative problem solvers, and ethical leaders to serve in the joint force. I highly recommend that CSC retain this elective for students next academic year. Another one from Major Jen Lindbergh. Where good ideas come from was a peer-led course with PhD oversight and included a small group of field grade officers who volunteered for the class, knowing that much of it was going to be self and group guided. The only structure provided included the diverse topics of the day, where each student was required to choose a book that fell onto the topic of that day. Each student then shared any salient points from their book to the group and provided an opportunity for crosstalk between the other students on some of these points. Some students chose hands-on learning exercises 
while others just post questions on key aspects of their selected reading. This freedom to choose sharing and teaching methods allowed each student to find creative ways of sharing and teaching others about topics that they may not have had much exposure to. So going into this and PME and how this is something that can be applied across the board. The reason I highlighted some of this thus far is not necessarily to, to highlight the success of the class itself. It's more the overall structure. So it's something that's malleable and can be applied in almost any context. Now that we're operating remotely more than ever, units and organizations can leverage the virtual environment to increase collaboration across multiple locations. Some of the classes may need to be truncated where you have to focus on just a couple small, more uh, micro aspects of the topic and only get to a few of the students and have the classes more frequently. But you can really do this in any type of setting with uh, any group of individuals of any age and background. And, uh, and the more diversity you have in it, the, the better the experience. And some of the lessons learned that I had personally was to just let it flow. Initially, I tried to be pretty structured uh, and maintain the time constraints, which was typically two hours. But on average, the classes always seem to extend to at least four hours. And the students even want to continue meeting after the elected period had ended. Uh, but we were unable to do so due to uh, the global pandemic. But really, the reason I say let it flow and don't structure it too much is the fact that the second and third order effects and ideas are the most fruitful. So you really want to build upon each idea and encourage going down the rabbit hole. It's all about setting the environment allowing participants to explore their thoughts and encouraging them to dig deeper. Challenge and support those thoughts and ideas and encourage them to flourish. Thank you. Thank you everyone in the audience for listening to our, uh, our broadcast this week. Again, we're very excited to sort of offer a homegrown content here from a program that's been, uh, as we said, positively received in the two years running. It's been, it's been iterated and we very much hope that we get it picked up again in the, in the third year. So next week, we're going to return to highlighting our new non-resident fellows and the areas of expertise they bring to the table for the benefit of Marine Corps University and the Team Truenac community. And next week, we'll be featuring on Rosella Capella Zielinski, who is an assistant professor of political science at Boston University. And she'll be discussing the topic, Supplying Coalition Warfare, Wheat and Allied Coordination During World War I. We'll see you all then. Thank you. Education is what's important. Training, preparation for the expected. Education, preparation for the unexpected.